Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about all the consistency rules for Apex Trader funding. I'll make sure I cover each of these rules in great detail with examples and visuals so that it's the only video you'll need to watch to understand everything regarding consistency for Apex Trader funding. This pretty much will go hand in hand with my previous video which was on Apex's payout rules. And the reason they go hand in hand is because following the consistency rules will very much determine if you're approved for a payout or not. And I know there's been a lot of information thrown out there but I'm going to simplify all that in such a way you're easily able to understand it. So without further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, the consistency rules only apply to the PA and live account there are no consistency rules for the evaluation so by all means trade however you feel you need to in order to pass but once you do pass the evaluation you'll be transitioned to a PA account and being mindful of these consistency rules very much comes into play so what are these consistency rules let's list them out and we'll talk about each of them in depth throughout this video for you to get a better understanding we're gonna talk about the 30% rule dollar cost averaging scaling stop loss and trading the news these are essentially the most important and really the only rules you need to know regarding apex's consistency so let's first talk about the 30 percent rule so this rule only applies to the pa account not the live account once you transition to a live account you don't have to worry about this rule however you also don't have to worry about it in the pa account after your fourth month of withdrawals but by that time apex will probably switch you over to a live account anyways if you've been trading consistently for that long the 30 percent rule states your best trading day cannot be more than 30 percent of your total p and l so this p PL consists of profits and losses in your current balance, not the lifetime PL of the account. So what this means is when traders submit a withdrawal request, whatever the profit balance currently is in that account, your best trading day cannot exceed 30% of that. Again, let me rephrase that. The 30% consistency rule applies to your total PL on the day of your withdrawal request. So whatever your total PL is when you make a payout request, your biggest trading day can't be more than 30% of that. The way you would calculate this is your highest net profit day divided by your total account PL, again for that payout period. If you do go over 30%, but Apex sees you trade consistently, you should still get your payout. More on this later. Let's use the 50k account size plan to illustrate this point further. Say you traded for 10 days and you increased the starting balance from 50k to 54k. Your best trading day within those 10 days was $1,000. So you're ready to make a withdrawal. Your withdrawal would be approved because $1,000 of the $4,000 profits you've made would account for 25% of that, well below the 30% threshold. Again, simply take your highest trading day and divide that by your current account P&L. So 1,000 divided by 4,000 equals 25%. So let's say you decide to withdraw $2,000 bringing the account balance from 54k to 52k. You trade again for the next 10 days and you increase the account balance back up to 53k. You're ready to make another withdrawal. However, your current P&L balance this time is $3,000 instead of the $4,000 before you made your first withdrawal. Remember, your current P&L only accounts for whatever profits currently remain in your balance, not the profits you've already withdrawn. Another important detail to know is your highest profitable day is determined based on each payout cycle. Cycle. Should you request a payout on trading day 15, your subsequent highest profitable day for the 30% rule will be considered from day 16 until the date of your next payout request. So it's basically from cycle to cycle. So let's say in this payout cycle, you had another $1,000 day and this was your best trading day. Well, in this case, you would exceed the 30% rule because $1,000 divided by the 3,000 current P&L is about 33%. So you would simply have to keep trading until you're within the 30% rule. However, this is not such a black and white rule. If you exceed 30% when making a withdrawal request, but Apex sees you're respecting your trading strategy, you consistently trade around the same number of contracts, you're not trading erratically, they can still approve your payout even though you exceeded 30%. The rule is reviewed from approval to approval, and as long as Apex sees you're trading consistently, this isn't such a steadfast rule. So please keep that in mind. The rule is designed to keep irrational traders from receiving a payout. Apex wants to prevent traders from yoling the trade by buying a large number of contracts in one trade and already fulfilling the minimum account balance requirement in one day and then trading micros for the rest to meet the 10 day rule. They're very against that. So as long as you're trading consistently, you have nothing to worry about. But if you really want to ensure you remain below 30%, simply take your current P&L of your account, whatever it may be at, and multiply it by 0.3. Whatever number comes up, just make sure your best trading day does not exceed that. So say your current P&L is 2K, 2,000 times 0.3 equals 600. So keeping your best trading day below $600 will ensure you're below the 30% requirement. But at any time, if you do exceed 30% and now you want to find out how high your current P&L needs to be, 
you simply divide your best trading day by 0.3. So say your best trading day is $900. To ensure you're within the 30% rule, you simply take 900 divided by 0.3, which comes out to $3,000. So your P&L has to be at least $3,000. I hope all that made sense. If it didn't, please leave your question in the comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Again, this rule will no longer apply after your fourth month of withdrawals. Let's move on. Let's talk about dollar cost averaging. So dollar cost averaging is basically adding into a losing trade in order to improve your initial entry price. So it's adding into a negative P&L. For example, if you're going long and the market goes short, you keep buying more long positions, again, to lower your entry price. Vice versa, if you're going short and the market goes long, you keep adding into your short position to better your entry price. Apex prohibits this practice with the exception of doing it one time. Apex will allow you to add into a negative P&L just one time after your initial entry, but no more. There are no rules for the amount of contracts you can buy for that additional entry. Apex doesn't regulate it, but obviously be smart with your risk management. So let's use crude oil as an example. Say you buy a contract to go long on crude oil at $70. The trade goes against you and goes down to $69. In order to improve your cost average, you decide to buy an additional two contracts at $69. Apex will allow this. However, let's say the trade continues to go against you and now crude oil is down to $68. Apex will no longer allow you to buy more contracts because you only get the one. With scaling, however, you can buy or short as many entries as you'd like. Because unlike with dollar cost averaging, with scaling, you're buying or shorting into a positive P&L instead of a negative P&L. So scaling into winning trades is allowed as much as you want, but dollar cost averaging into losing trades is only allowed once. But again, when you're scaling, Apex doesn't regulate how many contracts you can buy or short. Just be smart with your risk management. Again, they don't want to see you buy 20 contracts on your first day for a big windfall and then trade micros for a small profit the rest of the time. So let's use another visual example. You buy a contract to go long in crude oil at $70. Crude oil goes to $72, but then it pulls back to $71. You're feeling pretty good about your trade, so you decide to buy another contract at $71. Crude oil continues to go higher and reaches $73, but you think it can get to $74, so you buy another contract. All of this is allowed as much as you want because you are scaling into a positive P&L. Let's move on to how Apex regulates stop losses. So Apex does require a stop loss, whether it's an actual digital one already placed in your trading software or a mental stop loss you track yourself. The stop loss cannot be more than three to four times the potential profit target. So for example, what that means generally is you can risk at most $800 to make $200 or you can risk at most $1,600 to make $400. The rule isn't so black and white as there are exceptions, but Apex is already allowing such a high risk to reward that any more would risk triggering your drawdown anyways. So don't let this rule get to you. Apex will not look at every single trade or even your total daily trades to see if you're abiding by these restrictions. They're simply going to look at the average amount of ticks of your winning trades and the average amount of ticks on your losing trades. Obviously, if your losing trades ticks are greater than three to four times your winning trades ticks, then that might be an issue. They'll review this when you make your withdrawal request. But again, as long as you're trading consistently, you have nothing to worry about. Lastly, let's talk about trading the news. Apex does not allow trading the news as a strategy. So if you're simply trying to trade the massive volatile spikes when news is released, that is not allowed. However, as long as you're trading your strategy that you have been trading consistently, you are allowed to do so during the news. So say you're trading crude oil using your strategy. Your strategy is buying at key support levels using Fibonacci retracements. So you buy into support and are officially in the trade. The news for crude oil inventories gets released within the same hour you're trading your strategy. That's perfectly fine. You're allowed to be in the trade even with the news released, but purposely trying to ride the spikes right when the news gets released as your strategy is not allowed. I hope all that made sense. Again, if you have questions about anything that was discussed in this video, please leave them in the comments down below or if there's anything i missed that you guys want to add on to by all means leave it in the comments so that'll do it for this video to help support this channel you guys can use my customized code bob at checkout it stands for break or bail the link in the description below will take you directly to apex's website and applying the code during checkout will give you the best current deal apex is offering thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below take care and i'll see you guys in the next video Thank <laughs> you.